We present Sell Out by Ron Evans, produced in our Durban studios by Stephen Budden. Diplomatic service will never have you back after this episode. I can't understand them. Why blame me for their own incompetence? Oh, you know the foreign office here. Yeah, they can do no wrong. In this instance, you're the whipping boy. Yes, me and my career. Damn them to hell. It's not as if I can afford to retire. Thirty years' work gone in one exchange of telegrams. I'll be sorry, though, Janet, you see... Now that they've put old Randall Jenkins in my place at the United Nations, watch Britain's international reputation take a dip. If it can dip much further, dear. Oh, it can, it can. You, you could try for a position in the city. After all, you do have a lot of friends there. I'll try, of course, but I must add that the future looks very bleak. Well, if that fails, we'll have to sell up Sackley House go and live in Cheshire with my mother. Never. Let her crow at me for the rest of my life. No, Janet, never. She always said you'd come to no good. Even when you got your knighthood, she said, I told you so. They only knight them to get rid of them. Not that old bat nose. I couldn't bear to live with your bat nose. All right, dear. All right. Then, Fred, we'll find a way out of this mess. Oh, I wish we knew the future. It's... But it's rather frightening. Neither of us is young anymore. I'll see Harvey tomorrow morning. Perhaps he can suggest something. After all, I do have a reputation for skillful manoeuvring, you know. And over hasty decisions. Oh, I see. So you're on their side, the people who sack me. Oh, don't be silly, dear. You know I'm not. But it is a fact that you tend to be somewhat impetuous. He who hesitates has lost. Yes, but look before you leap. Hmm, hmm. Proverbs can be very contradictory. Oh, damn it. What's wrong, dear? Everything. My whole life ruined in one tiny era. Well, you know what the government is. They don't look at it like we do. All they can see is the 75 million pounds your era cost the country. Yes, and what worries me most is that it may not be just the government who looks at it like that. There may be a potential employer. Oh, Janet, I feel like a drink. How about you? Oh, yes, dear. That's a nice idea. Yes, and there's a pub a couple of miles farther on. Shall we stop there? <laughs> ah, that's better. Shall we sit over in that corner where it's quiet? Yes. There are rather a lot of people in here. Rupert, look at that man over there. Which one? There are dozens of men. The one dressed in funny clothes, about our age. The one looking our way? Yes. He keeps staring at you. Do you know him? No, oh, certainly not. Look at him. Loud green shirt and a bow tie. Brown and white shoes. Quite an extraordinary get-up. Coat over his shoulders like some Italian playboy and drinking some strange milky coloured concoction. He's still staring at you. Well, stare back at him. Then perhaps the blighter will improve his manners or go away. Obviously a darn foreigner. What happens, Rupert? He's coming over here. Don't look at him. Ignore him if he says anything. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Are you Sir Rupert Sackley Gore? Yes. Do I know you? May I introduce myself? I'm Grant Miller of Mobile, Alabama, United States of America. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Miller. Is there something I can do for you? Plenty, if we can talk privately. I can't see what we have in common, Mr. Miller, but I should think that... Look, uh... I'll put it straight on the line. I can put a lot of dough your way, more than you can handle. Really? I'm sure you must be talking to the wrong person. You mean I'm... there are two Sir Rupert Sackley Gores? No, I mean... The... Are you the one who was the British ambassador to the United Nations until you were fired a few days back? You're brutally frank, sir. It's true, ain't it? Well, yes. 
But I'm not accustomed to such blunt speech. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly a diplomat myself. And what are you exactly? Well, let's say I'm a kind of middle man. I see. And you think my husband can be of assistance, Mr. Miller? I guess that's in a nutshell. And what kind of deal did you have in mind? A property deal. Oh, you want to buy exactly a house, is that it? Correct. Could be. Well, surely it is or it isn't. Well, we can make a start with the house. How much do you want for it? Well, I haven't really thought about it. I'm trying to... Five thousand do pounds sterling. <laughs> You're joking, Mr. Miller. I thought so. No, I ain't joking. Come now, Miller. Who put you up to this? The names of my principals must remain confidential, so I can't tell you that. I'll tell you what. What about six thousand furnished? How does that hit you? Like a torpedo. Finish your drink, Janet. It's getting late. Look, I'm serious. How much do you want for the place? Do you realize that Sackley House has 33 rooms? It's fully modernized inside, and it's set in 30 acres of the finest... It sounds English... great, yeah. 100,000? Uh, what was that? He offered us uh, 100,000 pounds, dear. 100,000 sterling? Still not enough? Okay, I'll make my last offer. 150 grand furnished. That's in pounds sterling. You've uh, seen the place, Mr. Miller? Well, I don't need to. I like the sound of it, the way you describe it. How soon can you fix it up? Well, this is all very extraordinary. Uh, you're not uh, joking with us, are you? I told you before, Sir Rupert, I ain't joking. Jokes don't move me. Is it a deal? Well, yes, but... Uh... Yes, Mr. Miller, it is a deal. When can you fix up the papers? I want them all legal and watertight, mine. I'll uh, contact my solicitor in the morning. Now, uh, can you give me some details? You know, your full names, permanent address and all that. Okay, write this down. Your lawyer can check it out. The full name's Grant Bertram Dudley Miller, and I'm staying at the Fairlie Hotel in London. But you will have to give me your permanent address. Oh, it's not you who is buying, is it? I'll be paying the dough, so all the documents will be in my name. But surely then you'll be the owner, not your principals. I've got to keep their identity confidential at this stage. No problems, though. All i got to do is transfer it to them when they take possession. I see. Very well. Now, your permanent address? Where I'm staying at any given time. Like now, I'm living at the Fairlie Hotel. Uh, you're a permanent resident there. Well, until I check out, say, sometime next week. I'm not at all sure my solicitor Stop will Stop worrying, Sir Rupert. I'll be paying cash. Hard cash. Now, how do you want it? Ones, fives, or in tens? Uh, I'll take a check. I don't initially deal in checks. Well, sure, I got a bank account here in London, but in a small deal like this, cash is better. A small deal? Sure. We're going on to bigger and better things, you and me. I don't understand. When you've bought Sackley House, I'll have nothing left to sell you. <laughs> well, I got news for you. But listen, I was thinking of going deeper into this thing right now, but I guess I'll leave it till we settle a house deal. My principals are very patient people. When will you have the papers ready? Say this time next week. Okay, that suits me. If your lawyer wants to check my credentials, I got an account with the Marlborough Bank. And the account number, uh, you better write this down. Yes, yes, Marlborough Bank. 832. 832. Bleak. 954. 954. Oblique 005. You got that? 005. Yes. Uh, that's the London branch, Threadneedle Street. And where shall we meet to uh, to conclude the sale? Well, I'll call at Sackley House a week from today, in the morning. Will that suit you? Yes, that's fine. Well, uh, if you folks will excuse me... Excuse me before you go, Mr. Miller. How did you know we'd be here? We only came in on the spur of the moment. <laughs> I know a lot of things, but let's say I've been following you and leave it at that. Bye. See you next week. <sighs> Oh, how incredible. Damn peculiar, my dear. But we're saved. 150,000 pounds. Somebody's pulling our legs, mark my words. No, Robert, he's serious. I know he is. There's a catch in this somewhere. We'll wait and see. I'd much rather think that Mr. Miller is genuine. But what makes me so doubtful, dear, is why he thinks I can sell him an even bigger property when I don't even own one. <laughs> Looking for 
space to hang and dry your washing? Washline distributors have the solution. Their rotating and fold down wash lines take up the smallest spaces. Ideal for townhouses, simplexes and balconies at affordable prices. Galvanized or powder coated and available in five different colors. For 24 hour delivery, installation, reliable and friendly service, phone wash line distributors on 011 792 2486. That's 011 792 2486. Wash lines for every space and need. Die goeie ouda van Springbok Radio is terug. Twintig onverkrijgbare liekies nou op een CD. Met al jou ginstelinge, Virginia Lee, Cora Marie, Anton Goosen, Sonja Herold, Kupiru en vele meer. Herleef Springbok Radio, Afrikaanse treffers. If you want to help them, this is what to do. Make sure the water hog is never, never you. Just make sure the water hog is never, never you. Ah, oh, Charles, Rupert here. How are you? Uh, busy, Rupert. Very, very busy. Uh, what can I do for you? Charles, I'd like you to investigate the creditworthiness of a certain individual. Who is it? Somebody we know? No, it's an American staying at the Fairley Hotel in London, and he has an account with the Threadneedle Street branch of Marlborough Bank. Name? I'll give it to you in full. Grant Bertram Dudley Miller. Account number... Say no more, Rupert. I know about his account already. You do? He called the stir in financial circles a few weeks ago. I can't tell you what because the matter is still being investigated. Ah, oh, you mean he's a crook? Hardly, Rupert. His account at Marlborough stands in the region of 50 million pounds. Ooh. So the man is genuine? Yes, of course he's genuine. He's a little odd, I believe, and a mystery. And why is he a mystery? Well, his origin, how he made his money, and what he intends doing with it. He's no investments whatsoever. He's offered me 150,000 for Sackley House. You take it, Rupert. No. Thank you very much, Charles. See you next time I call at the club. Hmm. Did you hear that, Janice? The drift, yes. Our Mr. Miller has a lot of money. Only 50 million. Oh, that is a relief. But I think you'd better telephone Bennett and tell him to start the paperwork. Yes. Yes, right away. In fact, I'm going to drive into the village and see to it personally. That seems to be in order, Sir Rupert. I hope so, Bennett. You'll come to the house on Wednesday morning? Uh, yes, Sir Rupert. Uh, early. Do that. I didn't specify a particular time with Mr. Miller. Well, I must say, Sir Rupert, you've made an excellent transaction. Yes, I didn't uh, expect to get more than 80,000 for the place, Lock, Stock and Barrel. The blighter hasn't even seen the old place yet, either. Oh, dear. Uh, that doesn't bother me, Bennett. He won't go back in his word, I'm sure of that. He was too keen to buy in the first place. You think there'd been an oil strike on the property? Eh, hey, that's a thought. I wonder if anybody's been poking around the place whilst uh, Lady Janet and I were in New York. That is a very provoking thought, sir. Well, my two gardeners will know. Nothing escapes their eagle eyes. Could be an explanation, you know, Bennett. Yes, it could be. On the other hand, Sir Rupert, the village is a very small place. Had there been any strangers poking about, well, there would have been talk. Hmm. Also true. Yeah, just the same, I'll take a look round the estate this afternoon. So, is everything in order now? Yes. Though Mr. Miller's permanent address would have been desirable. Most irregular, I must say. However, as he'll be transferring the property to his principal shortly, I don't see any problems arising. These 
Um, uh, principles. Are they uh, Americans? Do you know, Sir Rupert? They could be Patagonian sheep herders, for all I know, Bennett. Uh, I see. A bunch of foreigners taking over Sackley House could rather uh, bring down the tone of the district. Uh, this is one of the last bastions of true rural England. It would be. I have no pity. control over the behaviour or the nationality of the future residents, Bennett. Oh, uh, no offence meant, uh, Sir Rupert. If they can afford to buy Sackley House without so much as viewing it. Could be that this miller is acting on behalf of, say, a um, Californian commune. Oh, heaven <laughs> forbid. Or a group of wealthy West Indians looking for a place to settle their families. <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the scandal of it. Oh, Bennett, old chap, we must move with the times. It's money that calls the tune these days, you know. Oh, if only there were some way you could retain Sackley House, Sir Rupert. You've read the newspapers and you must know my situation. The place must be sold to ensure my own future. Of course. Of course. Well, cheer up, Bennett. It's far too premature to look on the gloomy side. One never knows. <laughs> Perhaps Mr. Miller's principles are nature conservationists with a deep desire to preserve the area and its traditions. <laughs> Don't bring Mr. Miller here any faster. I can see a delivery van coming. Could be the laundry. Or Mr. Miller. Don't be ridiculous. What would a man with Miller's bank balance be riding a delivery van for? He got. It is Miller. I'll go and see him in. No, dear. That's the maid's job. Oh, yes, you're right. Well, I suppose it's better not to show myself too keen. He's got another man with him, I see. He's probably his legal advisor. Sit down. Now calm yourself, Rupert. Be as, as natural as possible. I am, I am. Ah, good morning, Sir Rupert, Lady Janet. Nice to see you again. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Miller. Now let me introduce you to my colleague, Sam Beckert. How do you do, Mr. Beckert? This is my wife, Lady Janet Sackley Gore. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. And this gentleman is my solicitor, Mr. Bennett. Uh, pleased to meet you, Bennett. Pleased to meet you. May I uh, offer you gentlemen some tea? No, thanks. I'd rather get straight down to business. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, somewhere private, just you and me like. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yes, we can do my study. There's no hitch, is there? No, no, no. The deal goes through as we discussed it, but I also want to talk about my other proposals. Well, if you'll follow me, Milan. Sure. Uh, stick around here, will you, Sam? I'll give you a yell when I need you. Sure, boss. You'll call me Grant, Sir Rupert. It makes me feel easy. all in order, as far as I can see. Yeah, it's fine. Well, here's your 150 grams. Count it. I brought you all in tens to make it easier. Well, how's that, Sir Rupert? Good heavens. I wouldn't know where to begin counting. It's been double-checked if you want to take my word for it. Yes, yes, I, I think I will. You were happy about it? I'm very happy. So... Sackley House is mine now, huh? Of course, uh, Grant. All yours. You'll give us a couple of weeks to vacate. Oh, end of the month will do fine. Thank you. Yes, we can manage by then very nicely. Okay. So that's that fixed. Can we get on to the other business now? Uh, most certainly. Though I don't understand how well, I can... You will if you hear me out. I want to buy the Isle of Man. How much? The Isle of Man. That's what I said, the Isle of Man. But I can't sell you the Isle of Man. It belongs to, well, the, the people who live there. Look, stop stalling. It ain't such a big place. Two, two, seven square miles with a population of little more than 50,000. Now, uh, really, Mr. Miller, I... Grant, can't... if you please. I can offer you 200,000 sterling. Even 200,000 million? An impossible figure. Look, I tell you what. I'll make it a quarter of a million, cash on the nail. But this is preposterous. Uh, how can I authorize the sale of the Isle of Man to you? It, it, it's unthinkable. The Isle of Man is part of the United Kingdom, right? Well, yes, and but... Ten days ago, you were the United Kingdom's representative at the United Nations. Isn't that right, too? Please, you're going too fast for Ten me. days ago, you were in a position to negotiate at an international level on behalf of Her Majesty's government... But I wasn't empowered to sell territory to private individuals. As far as my principles are concerned, you were. 
Think of it, Roop. A quarter of a million, all yours, in cash. And I'll give you another quarter of a million for the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands? Yep. That's half a million altogether. Oh, yeah, and I'd want you to throw in the silly isles and the Isle of Wight for good measure. You really do have a sense of humor, I'm sure. Sit that, uh... down, will you? I'm serious. I got the dough in that van outside. You want to take a look at it? No, this is, is, is quite ridiculous. To me, it ain't. Now, look. I give you a special deal for this place. I've paid you three times what it's worth. Call it a softening up if you like. But if we ain't going to do any more business together, I'm going to cancel this sale. See? I... I don't know what to say. All you got to say is yes and make out a typewritten receipt signed by your lawyer out there. He's a commissioner of olds, isn't he? Yes, of course. Okay. And that's all you do is that. And I give you the dough here today. This is all very confusing. I don't see Listen, how... if you don't cooperate in this deal, I'll not only cancel the sale, I'll take my dough to Sir Humphrey Randall Jenkins, who took over from you. Him? I only came to you because I knew that you were in a sticky situation. More likely, therefore, to cooperate. That's right, Troop. So how about it? Hmm. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll have a talk to Bennett. Sure, do that. Give him a cut. But don't be long, huh? Perhaps, but it doesn't alter the fact that he's prepared to give me half a million pounds right now just for a piece of paper. I suggest you humor the man. We can't afford to have the sale of this place cancelled. He's so certain I'll do it. He sent this Beckett fellow out to the van to get the money. Well, for heaven's sake, Rupert, give the man his piece of paper. It'll be worthless, and if it makes him happy, we'll be happy too. What do you think, Bennett? I, I don't see what harm it can do. You can't sell what isn't yours, can you? It's not much different than playing Monopoly. One buys and sells Piccadilly, Mayfair, and heaven knows what. It's a game. An excellent point, Mr. Bennett. Yes, there is a difference. Here we're playing for real money. Uh, could it be a forged currency? Well, why would a man with 50 million in the bank want to deal in counterfeit? No, it's real money, Bennett. We can be certain of that. Well, I think Lady Janet is right. Humor the man. It's either that or have the sale of Sackley House cancelled. I'll type the receipt. The Isle of Man, the Isle of Wight, and the Channel Isles, you say? And the Silly Isles. Uh, Six copies, dear. I suggest you butter him up some more by throwing in Ireland. Well, that's great, Rook. Oh, and thanks for throwing in Ireland. It makes it a worthwhile deal. Uh, I take it you ain't going to count the dough. No, we'll just leave it piled up there by the wall until I can bank it tomorrow. <laughs> You'll cause a panic if you stick it in the village bank. I'll go up to the city tomorrow and place it in the first cosmopolitan bank. I have a modest account there. Oh, yeah, that's Sir Charles Jessup's bank. Yeah, he's quite a financial wizard, I'm told. An old friend. You know something? I've been looking at that map of the British Isles on your wall there. Yes, and uh, what about it? Scotland, how much? You want to buy Scotland? Sure, why not? Another half million, do you? Nowhere near enough, Grant. Oh, it ain't much of a place. Rainy and foggy. Went once for a trip around this Loch Lomond place on a boat and didn't see a thing for fog. I reckon even half a million's double what it's worth. Don't forget the North Sea oil. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's that. Can't say my principals will be much interested in oil, though. Isn't it time you told me who they were? No, nope, can't do that. You'll know soon enough. Okay, look, I'll tell you what. A million for Scotland. A round, cool million. You'll never get a better offer than that. Oh, I could easily. You could where? The Russians. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Roop. Russians, Chinese, Guatemalans, none of them would take you seriously if you made an offer. I'm the only guy in this kind of property buying market. A million's my last offer. Now, you take it or you leave it. Oh, very well. A measly million it is. Right. Let's sort that out. Hey, Sam. Yeah, boss. Go and bring in a million, will you? Yeah, boss. Oh, Lady Janet, will you let us have a receipt in sex duplicate? Scotland for an even million? A million? Good heavens. Well, I reckon it's overpriced. Relax, Roop. You're looking mighty worried about something. There you are getting all this dough for property you never paid a cent for. Well, it's something of a strain. What? Money for nothing, there's no strain to anybody. You know, it, uh... It'd be a good idea if you and your wife emigrated by the end of the month. 
you know, before the deal becomes uh, public. Public? Sure. You can't keep a property deal of this magnitude a secret forever. Besides, there'll be a lot of folks annoyed with you. Might want to do you a whole lot of harm for selling the ground under their feet. I know how I'd feel if somebody sold out the states. Mighty annoyed, believe me. Yes, of course. Yes, I understand that. Thank heavens this is only a game. But what was that? I just said I'd, uh, I'd feel the same. In fact, I'll be glad to get back to the states when all this is over and my principles have taken transfer. This ain't my kind of climate. Your principles will be taking transfer here before you leave. No such luck. When everything's fixed up, I'll have to make a special trip to see them. You know, hand over the papers and tie up the legal ends from their point of view. They're very meticulous about details. No loopholes, but very honorable folk they are. Never Welsh on a deal. But I reckon they'd be pretty harsh on any guy who Welshed on them. Naturally. What's keeping Sam? Shouldn't take him this long. All the dough's packed in hundred grand bundles. I was just talking about you, Sam. I waited for the receipt. Boss. All right, stick the dough in the corner there. I don't think Roop wants to check it. Hey, Roop? Uh, no, 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 that won't be necessary. Uh, here are the receipts. Six of them. The lawyer guy signed and stamped them. Okay, close the door on your way out. Sure. Sign these, will you? Yes. There we are. Four for you and two for me. Scotland is all yours. Good hunting. Thanks a lot. It bothers me, though. What does? Well, it's an untidy job. You know, buying oddments like this. It's not very professional. I don't quite follow your reasoning. Okay, I'll stop beating about the bush. Look at that map again. It don't seem quite right, does it? I should buy England as well. Hey, steady on there. You're going a little too far. You reckon? No, it'll be untidy if I don't buy the whole lot. And why should you worry if you're going to emigrate? I haven't said I am, yes. Well, I advise you to. And there won't be much more matter at you if you sell England as well. Really, Grant, I think this joke has gone far enough. This is no joke, Roop. How many times do I have to tell you that? Now, please calm down. Don't lose your temper. Okay, but don't say that again. What do you think those bundles are on the corner there? Bars of chocolate? That's money, Roop. Real, crinkly spending money. Think of the great time you can have spending it. And I'll double it if you throw in England, okay? Impossible. That's where you're wrong. Let me tell you this, Roop. I've really been angling after England all along. Scotland, Ireland, all them crummy islands are strictly for the birds, see? I want England. We'll make it three million, a bulk deal. No. Look, I've given you a million and a half already. And the dealings have been straight and we've both been smiling. But now I'm going to be ruthless. Roop, I want England and you've got to sell it to me. Not for three million. How much, then? Fifty million. What are you crazy? That's nearly a pound a head for the population. Oh, hell, Rook, you must be soft in the head. Oh, no. I'm not the one who's soft in the head. Four million. Fifty million, no less. Why should England be worth fifty times more in Scotland? It's history, it's traditions. They're worth more than the land itself. I'm in the property business. I can't make anything out of traditions and history. Think of it, Grant. Royalty. Changing of the guard. The mayor's show. The Miss World competition. Okay, so what about this Edinburgh tattoo? That's tradition, isn't it? You paid for that when you bought Scotland. Now, for Pete's sake, group, let's be logical about this. Nobody's going to pay 50 million for England. Look, I want it, and I don't want to sit here all day arguing about it. Ten million. Not much. It's a lot to some guy who a week ago was wondering where his next meal was going to come from. An unemployable old diplomat. There's no call for insults. Well, put your feet back on the ground and make sense. Ten million's a whole lot of dough. Not for England, the country I love, the land of my forefathers. I don't care how many fathers you got here. I'm a businessman, not a patient of the arts. Well, I must, uh, I, I, I must think about it. You got till I finish this cigar. Then I tear up the deeds of the sale for this crummy house. You're a hard man, Grant. Yeah, I'm ruthless. Now get to thinking. This cigar ain't gonna last forever. Ten million. That's what I said, Roop. Cash money. Make it fifteen. Okay, fifteen it is. Oh, that's better, Grant. You can afford it. Been checking up on me? Wouldn't you, if the position were reversed? Damn right I would. So, you'll be happy with fifteen million. Satisfied rather than happy. You've really got me into a selling mood. Can you throw in anything else? Australia? Perhaps New Zealand? You don't have the right to sell those. If I want them at any time, I know who to see. Don't try and con me into buying something you ain't got no right to sell. 
Oh, yes, I was forgetting. They got their own governments. So is the Island Man, the House of Keys. Yep, Ireland too. But it's somehow different. To me, they're all part of the British Isles, but not Australia and New Zealand. Besides that, I don't want to rock the boat by buying up too much at once. Folks might get worried and overreact to the situation. Talking of my rights to sell, do you really believe I have the authority to sell out the entire British Isles to you? Not right now, Rupert. For the last few days, you've been a nobody, a has-been. And that's why I backdated these receipts to the middle of last month when you were still in the saddle of the United Nations. Well, that's dishonest. Selling Britain without having paid a cent for it is also dishonest in a way, so let's not delve too deeply into the moral aspects. You got sixteen and a half million to cure your conscience. That's enough for any guy. Sam! Yeah, boss? Get me fifteen million, will you? Right away, boss. Oh, say, Lady Janet, can you fix it up another receipt? But what have you bought now? England. My, you really are aiming high, Mr. Miller. That's it, Lady Janet. Higher than you ever believed. Nice to see you again, Charles. Are you very busy? Oh, no. Never too busy to see a man who's just deposited sixteen and a half million pounds in my bank. Dear me, no. Uh, can I offer you a drink? No, thank you, Charles. Not at the moment. My, your fortunes are looking up. I uh, hope you can explain this highly irregular but welcome deposit. The tax people are going to throw a fit when they hear of it. Yes, I was only wondering on the way down here how I could give them a rational explanation. Don't worry too much about it, old chap. I'll help you on that score. It, um, it is your money, I take it. Oh, every penny. <laughs> oh, my. You had the poor clerks down below in a real tizzy. It isn't every day a man walks into the bank with a cash deposit like that. Uh, how did you come by it? Do I have to tell you? Well... No, you, you don't have to, really. However, it would help. Did you sell something? Yes. Well, what on earth was it to realize a price like that? <laughs> North Sea Oil Wells? I'd rather not explain, Charles. Perhaps at a later date. It's, well, confidential. You'll have to tell the tax people, you know. They can check. That's what I'm afraid of. You did the sale with this American millionaire chap you telephoned me about, Grant Miller. Yes. I thought so. He made a massive cash withdrawal from the Marlborough Bank a few days ago. There was ever such a flap. Twenty million, I believe it was. And you got most of it. Excellent work, Rupert. Oh, you've no worries now, eh? No, no worries. What can you tell me about Miller? Why worry about him now you've got a king-sized slice of his fortune? I'm curious. Well, he's been in England three weeks now. We've done a few smaller deals, you know, a million here and a million there. Pretty shrewd man indeed, I'd say. Eccentric? Perhaps a bit mad? Not on your life. He's as sharp as they come. I've heard that he tends to be a little coarse in his manners and speech, but uh, Miller is highly regarded as the traditional high-powered American tycoon. A big wheeler-dealer, as they say. I think he's quite mad. Stark, raving mad. Well, I can't see how you've gained that impression, Rupert. Would you believe it if I told you he virtually gave me that money? Eh? Hmm. For a few pieces of worthless paper. Oh, I don't believe that. What did you sell him, Rupert? I'll tell you, Charles. But on one condition. That what I say doesn't go beyond this room until I give permission. Very well. Carry on. I first met Miller when Janet and I were on our way home from Whitehall last week. I was a very worried man. If I hadn't played this silly game with him, he would have cancelled the sale of Sackley House. How extraordinary. Incredible. But true. And Janet and the solicitor Bennett are my witnesses. Yes. I see now what you mean by the man being mad. But it seems so out of character, from what I've heard of Miller. You say he's acting on behalf of another party. Yes, but I was unable to extract from him who they are. But more than one, I'm sure of that. Very strange, Rupert. The only suggestion I can offer you for the future is to keep the money deposited and see if there are any repercussions. We have to be out of Sackley House by the end of the month, which means I'll have to buy a new place. One in Cornwall I saw advertised, Wakemore Manor. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I know it. A grand place, Georgian. Belonged to the Martindale family. Spent a weekend there once. Another drink, Charles. I'm only halfway through this one. 
You've really done this old place up well, I must say. When we made up our minds to buy Wakemore Manor three weeks ago, I asked the local contractor and an interior decorator to make a crash job of it. Did far better than I anticipated. It looks much better than the last time I was here. That was in the Martindale's day. Let me see. That would be about 30 years ago. <laughs> My, how time flies. Mm. Lovely housewarming party. Thank you, Bennett, it is. Let me introduce you to Sir Charles Jessup. Chairman of the First Cosmopolitan Bank. Delighted to meet you, Sir Charles. Sir Rupert has told me all about the dealings of this American fellow, Grant Miller. He did? Oh, well, uh, odd. Uh, very odd. That is an understatement. But if the madman wants to give all his money away, who are we to stop him? Hey, Rupert? <laughs> I'm not breaking an objection. Excuse me, Sir Rupert. You know what it is? A telephone call from London for you, sir, in the library. Ask my wife to take it, will you? Well, the gentleman said it was personal and urgent. The Prime Minister's office. What? Prime Minister? I'm coming. Very good, sir. By <laughs> Joe, Rupert. Perhaps he wants to give you your old job back. Well, if he does, I'll quickly tell him what he can do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem that, that Sir Rupert has found his feet once more. And the heirs of a millionaire. <laughs> did. It was only a joke. Well, call it a game. Yes, the man must be out of his mind, I agree. I'm very sorry, Prime Minister. I didn't expect the joke to go this far. Well, it's a very tedious and rather incredible explanation. Yes, yes. Yes, I'll call tomorrow. Please accept my sincerest apologies. You've had him ejected. Good. Very well, Prime Minister. I'll be at number ten about three. Uh, yes, yes, I mean at three precisely. Uh, thank you. Uh, good night, Prime Minister. Hmm. Is he in a temper? Ah, oh, you're here, Rupert. Oh, that terrible man Miller is outside. He wants to see you. Oh, dear. There's something wrong, dear. You're looking awfully pale. I've just had a broadside from number ten. Oh, good heavens, dear. Don't tell me the Prime Minister is still after your blood. It's a fresh problem, I fear. Connected directly with the gentleman who's waiting outside to see me. Here, dear, and show him in. At the same time, ask Sir Charles Jessop and Bennett to join me. I'm afraid this may be a rather harrowing experience. Oh, I thought all this was too good to be true. I was just outside, Rupert. Janet tells me I'm needed. Uh, what's wrong? Is Bennett with you? Yes, I'm here, Sir Rupert. I'll come in and close the door. What did the PM have to say? He was in a rage. It seems that Miller's assistant, another American called Sam Beckett, called on number 10. I don't know how, but he succeeded in getting an audience. The PM was very vague about what Beckett said... But it was something to the effect that the evacuation of the British Isles must start immediately. <laughs> what is this? An international practical joke? Well, the PM was furious and had the man ejected, naturally. But not before he'd handed over copies of my receipts for the money. He gods. Hmm. I had to present myself at number ten tomorrow afternoon with an explanation. You better come with me, Bennett. Oh, Sir Rupert. I don't want to be involved. But you are involved. Your name and stamp are on those receipts. Yes, I think I'll take Janet with me, too. I'll need every witness. Hi, Rupert. How's it going? Lady J said you're in here. Hey, why the big serious look? This is Sir Charles Jessup. Yeah, I know. Head of the First Cosmopolitan. Pleased to meet you, Charles. Bennett, you know. Hi, Benny. You're looking very pleased with yourself, Mr. Miller. Hey, what's the Mr. Miller routine? It's grand, remember? Anyway, today's the big day. Perhaps you can clear up a small matter that's bothering me, Grant. Sure, yeah. What is it? A few moments ago, I had a call from the Prime Minister. Apparently, your colleague Beckett has been to see him. Sure, yeah, to give him his eviction notice. I can assure you, Grant, that the Prime Minister did not appreciate the joke. 
I'm on the carpet tomorrow. <laughs> if I were in your shoes, Rupert, I'd be on the first flight to New York tomorrow instead. All right, Grant, the joke's over. Gone too far. I'll arrange with Sir Charles to have the money transferred back to your account at the Marlborough Bank, and you can return those silly pieces of paper. Do I take it you want a Welsh on the deal? It wasn't a deal, Grant. It was a joke, a very puzzling, if funny joke. I put it down to your American sense of humor. You made a deal, so you better stick to it. Steady on. You shut up and don't interfere. You've got no say in this matter. Oh, really? I say, Grant, you can't speak to my friends like that in my home. It ain't your home, Roop. Yes, it is. I paid 120000 for it. Then you're a dope. I bought England for $15 million, didn't I? And this is England, ain't it? Technically, this is my place. Calm down. You're being totally unreasonable. I've told you the joke is over. Now, let's all have a drink and a good laugh. Rupo, pal, you spoiled my laugh in mood. You knew this wasn't a joke. You took my money, didn't you? It's in the bank, waiting to be returned to you. I don't want the money, damn you. I want the British Isles every acre. Oh, dear. This is getting to be such a bore. Now, talk sense, please, Grant. How can I talk sense when you're trying to welch on our deal? What kind of a guy are you? Please! I can't take any more of this nonsense. It's making Alice in Wonderland seem like an Ibsen drama. Ibsen, Snibsen. My clients will be here any time now to take possession of their property. Well, they must be madder than you are. <laughs> you better not tell them that their faces, pal. What time is it now? Ten to nine. Yep, they left home two hours ago. Where are they coming from? London? London. Man, that's a laugh. The more I listen, the more I'm convinced that you need psychiatric treatment, Mr. Miller. You know... I don't think you guys understand what all this is about. Do you? Because if you do, kindly enlighten me. Well, with a bit of luck, maybe the television will tell you. Switch it on, Roop. What has the television to do with it? Switch it on. You might get the answer. Very well, but I didn't see what... The spokesman at the Royal Observatory tells us that he's unable to give any further information. Meanwhile, the city streets are thronged by crowds looking upwards at the gigantic, mysterious firework display in the Earth's upper atmosphere. I'm told that the glowing pinpoints of light, and there are thousands of them, are rapidly approaching and can be seen all over the British Isles. We take you now to our outside broadcasting unit at... Why did you turn it off? Because you just got the answer to your question. Okay. Has it filtered through, Roop? Wait... Surely you can't mean... Yeah, I do mean. But I reckon Roop ain't seen it yet. I'm afraid to. You mean those pinpoints of light are... Well, you can call them UFOs if you like, and they're coming to claim their property, all legal-like. Oh, no. What have I done? Sold the British Isles. That's what you've done. <laughs> Tim Sutcliffe as Sir Rupert Sackley Gore and John Simpson as Grant Miller. Jill Fenson with Lady Janet, Tony Wood, Bennett, Philip Armitage, Sir Charles Jessup, and Red Richards, Sam Beckett. Sellout by Ron Evans was produced in our Devon studios by Stephen Button. <laughs>